Let's, what, let's scamper in. Ugh. Okay. Oh, it's a wolf beast. Hello. Hey, guys, it's Adam, a.k.a. Swimming Bird, and welcome to Bloodborne. Last time, we got a taste of our own blunderbuss as Wolfsbane battled another hunter, the tough boss, Father Gascoigne. And with that out of the way, now it's on to the Cathedral Ward, where we might get some answers about our goal, seeking out the mysterious Pale Blood to end the hunt. And speaking of which, if you missed any of our hunts so far, there's a playlist link down in the description to get all caught up. So where we are headed is pretty creepy, there's a lot of new enemies to see, some of which are many, many times larger than we are, but hopefully we've got the skills to survive. I think so. Let's open this very important chest over here. This is going to help us out with a new workshop tool. This is the blood gem tool, and it allows us to put blood gems on our weapons to make them stronger. I think there's also a little note here. The Bjergenworth spider hides all manner of rituals and keeps our lost master from us. A terrible shame. It makes my head shudder uncontrollably. I have almost no idea what that means, but we will find out as we progress. One of my favorite things about the Souls games and Bloodborne is that you find little hints, little parcels dotted all over the world that gives you kind of clues into the story and the setting and what's actually happening here. Instead of having everything spelled out, you have to learn it through item descriptions and things like that. So it's kind of cool, but some of it might not make sense until later on. All right. This is the Cathedral Ward, and it's actually a relatively safe place, at least inside this little chapel. There's incense burning all over, and if you remember, the villagers that we encountered so far back in Yarnum, they had the, uh, those incense burning lanterns outside their windows and their doors. That was to keep the beasts away, and this place has incense all over the place, so I think it's, it's pretty safe here. You might have seen that weird, creepy creature creeping around in that cutscene. That's a lot of C's. We're gonna talk to this guy. He's not actually an enemy. He's, uh, he's lost it a little bit. Not just his legs. He's, uh, he's kind of lost it mentally, but we're gonna talk to him. Hmm? Oh, you must be a hunter. Very sorry. The incense must have masked your scent. Good, good. I've been waiting for one of your ilk. These hunts have everyone all locked up inside, waiting for it to end. It always does. Always has, you know. Since forever. But it won't end nicely. Not this time. Even some folks hiding inside are going bad. The screams of women folk. The stench of blood. The snarls of beasts. None of them's too uncommon now. Yarnum's done for, tell ya. But if you spot anyone with their wits about them, tell them about this here Erden Chapel. They'll be safe here. The incense wards off the beasts. Spread the word. Tell them to come on over. If you wouldn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy's creepy, but he's actually really nice. So if you guys remember back at the beginning of the game where we got attacked by our first wolf beast, that was Yosefka's clinic. And if you head back there now, Yosefka will be there and asking if you will send any survivors to her. But you want to send them here because this is the best place to send them. They'll be safe here from, uh, from beasts and things. So we're going to travel down. There's two ways to go. There's a gate that way. But we're going to head down here first because this actually leads to another area. There is a boss in the Cathedral Ward, but first we're going to head to another new area. Uh, but we got to deal with these guys. Jeez. Uh, he stabbed me for a lot. But luckily we got that regain system. So if you go in for an attack, you can get it back. These are the church hunters, and they are super creepy. They have pale faces, and uh, they will do the, like, invasion of the body snatchers thing at you. If they see you, they're like, ah, outsider, and they come at you. Yeah, they almost look like weird dolls or something, or they have masks on, but I think that's just their face. Ugh. All right, I'm going to grab some stuff around here. But yeah, the church, their hunters are, like, huge. They seem a lot taller than I am, but maybe they just grow big around here. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're a little creepier. Now this item here, we need to be quick. We're going to grab that and run. It's a good set of gear, but let's get out of here because that, that mysterious purple black hole, I can't exactly explain that. There's something on this church here that is, uh, invisible to us right now, but we might see it later if we have enough insight. I want to go this way real quick. We only have eight insight and I think we need a lot more. Ugh, here's another new enemy. This is a reaper. 
and he definitely lives up to his name. He's got a giant axe with blood all over it, and he's really creepy. I do not think this is a normal guy. He's got a pale face as well, but I don't know what happened to him to make him so giant. I'm going to try to just creep on up to him. He doesn't uh, he doesn't see you that often, and just use that. I'm also going to back up a bit. <laughs> he just he flooped his cape at me. We need to look out and try to stay behind him if we can, because if you stay at his big feetsies, he should be okay from a lot of his hits, but if you get too too far away from him, then he can easily hit you with his axe. Try to charge up on him. Look out! Look out! There we go. Gotta keep my stamina about so we can dodge. But he will do a lot of damage, as you can probably guess. He's like, where'd he go? He's looking for me. He's got this big jingly bell on top of him. When I was, I played through this area with Danielle, and she started calling them jingles. So this was a jingles. It's actually called a reaper. But I might start calling them jingles again. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Jingles there, walking around. Man, they really love their creepy, weepy statues in Yarnum, I'm noticing. This place has a ton of them. And we got some more trolls over here, as well as a giant uh, vista to look. Look at all these buildings. This game has this, like, creepiness to it, but it's also really beautiful. That guy's holding one of the statues. Some of the troll guys love to use those statues. There we go. That's the best way to take them down as well. A lot of the big enemies, if you can get that shot on them when they're about to attack, then you can get that visceral attack. So yeah, try to do that. Oh no. I gotta hurry and get, get up. There we go. Okay, if you lock into the visceral attack animation, the other guy can't hit you. So yeah, that was close. He almost hit me there. But I managed to uh, do that before. There we go. I, I'm not quite strong enough to kill these guys with just one visceral attack, but if I jump in, I might be able to... Oh, nope, nope, that wasn't a good idea. Keep slashing at him, even after he's dead, though. Get a little bit of health back. All right. I got kind of greedy there. We are going through this without backtracking a lot and getting more echoes to level up, so I might have a harder time than normal because, you know, I'm not, I'm not spending time grinding in an area. We're just going to keep progressing as much as possible. Oh, no. We got carrying... Crows. No, 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 don't peck me. <laughs> they took some more health down than I, I was expecting. So yeah, if we uh, if we keep pushing ahead without leveling too much, we're going to be in trouble because the stuff is just going to get more and more difficult. I think there's something... There we go. I knew there was something hidden around here. It's a monocular. So we can actually uh, put this on and look around. It's like a, like a binocular, but one. I guess that, <laughs> that makes sense. That's why it's called that. It gives you a little zoom in look so we can kind of look at the surroundings there. Nice. Now, ooh, I wanted to mention, so I actually used a bunch of the blood echoes that we gained in the last episode to level up a few times. So we're quite a bit stronger. I put points into endurance, vitality, and strength. I haven't put any into skill though, but we probably want a little bit of skill because I wanted to show you guys another weapon that I have. We bought it before. It's the threaded cane. I'm going to switch to it real quick. And uh, look at this. It's, uh, it just looks like a normal fancy man's cane. And, you know, if we're going to use the thread cane, we need to put on the uh, top hat that we just got. So we'll look even more fancy. There we go. Wolfsbane's so cool with his, uh, his gentlemanly... Uh, <laughs> he's got a monocle and a monocular. We're all set with all these mon things. Now this actually turns into a crazy whip. Look at this. The range is pretty good on this, but I mentioned we haven't leveled up skill at all. Skill is kind of like Bloodborne's version of dexterity, but the uh, the skill is what determines the strength of this weapon here, the threaded cane. Now this guy is crazy. I know I did a few hits there with the cane to show you guys, but I'm switching back to the cleaver because I don't want to take any chances with this guy. He has a giant ball and chain, and he's not afraid to use it. So we can hit him with some charged up attacks. Look out, because he will like sweep that ball and chain all over the place. You're not necessarily safe behind him. He's just going to like spring around. There we go. Another charge. And one more tap. There we go. We got another Jingles down. Another Reaper. That one's a little tougher. I think there's one of those little skitter beasts around here. We're going to start seeing these little beasts that don't attack you. But they skitter around like the crystal lizards in the, the Souls games. And they are good for uh, getting some loot if you can kill them before they skitter away and disappear. We got some more of these urn things that uh, were back in the chapel. I feel bad destroying those when that guy's around. But if no one's around, I'm just going to roll into them and uh, smash them because it's fun. What do we got here? The tempering blood gemstone. So it's locked. 
if we head back to uh, the Hunter's Dream, I can put a gemstone, or if, or two, if you have the your uh, your weapons leveled up or fortified a bit more. But you can put those into your weapons to make them stronger, and we're gonna do that later. We're probably gonna need it, cause like I mentioned, this area is gonna be tough, especially at the level that we're at. Look at that guy, man. That always creeps me out because of the. Uh, the little ragdoll, they'll, they'll flop around a little bit. I think we could level up like twice if we went back now, but I'm gonna wait a sec. So that way, whoa, I did not realize that would trigger again. What happened there? I didn't even get close to it. That creeped me out. I've never seen it actually do that when I didn't walk close to it in the right spot. Okay, that was creepy. Let's, uh, let's keep going. I'm going to uh, try to get a little bit more in terms of echoes here before we hop back to the Hunter's Dream. Charging attack is effective. There's a nice little view here as well. Man, the sky looks like it's on fire. It's still evening, so the hunt has not really fully begun. It, the sun's going down, and the night has not progressed yet. We got some more villager guys here. We're on our way to Old Yarnum. We saw Normal Yarnum. We're going to Old Yarnum, though, and that's where the next boss that we need to fight is. I do not want one of these puppies to to rush at me. I might just throw a pebble at one of these guys and try to get him to come at me. If you can get him to run into the bonfire, that works well, because then they, uh, they just light themselves on fire. Here comes a pup. Get him! Uh, puppy! 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 Hey, pup! Get him! Get him! Oh, no! Jeez! Doing a bit of damage. That, his, the guy who owns the puppy, he doesn't... He's a bad dog owner. He doesn't even care. He just, just walked away with his pitchfork, not even noticing his puppy went to attack. There we go. We're getting lots of blood vials from these guys, but eventually we're not going to get many vials anymore. We're going to have to go back to older areas if we want to get them. A lot of the uh, the enemies in the area coming up aren't going to drop vials as much, so we got to be careful. I think there's some hidden stuff around here. There's a, We're actually going to meet another... We, we met the one guy, but we're going to meet another guy that we can talk to that is pretty cool. He's a normal dude, sort of. He's not a monster or a villager with a pitchfork trying to kill us. So we're going to try to do that. That is a uh, another little chapel there, but we're going to go around to go in there. We don't need to go that way. There's a couple notes here. Beware of hound. You know when, when the uh, hunters have guns, they probably also have puppies. I'm going to try to run over here, and they can still hit you through this, but that's a that's a good way to get them to... Uh, oh, man, he's just biting up the stonework there. Hey, buddy, somebody worked on this. And uh, <laughs> somebody spent their time carving these stones, and a puppy's just biting him. But yeah, the guys with the hunters with guns tend to have hounds, so you gotta be careful. Look out, don't jump into his gun shots there. There we go, we got him. You, you can tell the ones with guns a lot of the time because they have those nice top hats and they drop the bullets. Alright, plus they have a gun that they shoot at you. Let's open this up, hello. The scariest part in this game, I think, at least for me, is when you open a door and uh or you go through a doorway and you don't know if someone's hiding on the other side of a corner ready to pounce and that happens a lot there will be things hidden that just moved that giant tomb there and that's where we need to head if we're going to old yarnum i need to come back to that in a second though because we're going to talk to our friend here our buddy another living person that is not crazy at least that i know of hello how you doing buddy he's praying over here He's You're part of the beast church. hunter, aren't you? I knew it. That's precisely how I started out. <laughs> oh, beg pardon. You may call me Alfred, protege of Master Ligarius, hunter of vile bloods. So, what say you? Our prey might differ, but we are hunters, the both of us. Why not cooperate and discuss the things we've learned? We both have amazing mutton chops, so I'm going to cooperate with this guy. Oh, very good. Very good indeed. Take this to celebrate our acquaintance. Here we go. Nice. Fire paper. Very useful. It makes your weapon light on fire. And we also get the ability to pray. He taught us how to pray. He's a man of God. Beast hunting is a sacred practice. May the good blood guide your way. Wolfsbane is just kind of like, I don't know about this guy. There must be oodles for us to share. Go on. Just tell me what piques your interest. So he'll tell us about a few different things. We can ask about the Healing Church or Bjergenworth. So let's talk to him a little bit. As you know, the Healing Church is the fountainhead of blood healing. 
Well, I'm a simple hunter, quite unfamiliar with the ins and outs of the institution, but I have heard that the holy medium of blood healing is venerated in the main cathedral, and that counselors of the old church reside in the high stratum of the cathedral ward. If you seek blood healing, and the church is willing, you should pay them a visit. So that's kind of our quest. We're trying to heal this weird illness, but we don't know what it is quite yet. Bergenworth is an old place of learning. And the Tomb of the Gods, carved out below Yarnum, should be familiar to every hunter. Well, once a group of young Bergenworth scholars discovered a holy medium deep within the tomb. This led to the founding of the Healing Church and the establishment of blood healing. In this sense, Everything sacred in Yarnum can be traced back to Bergenworth. But today, the college lies deep within a tangled wood, abandoned and decrepit. And furthermore, the healing church has declared Bergenworth forbidden ground. It's unclear how many of its scholars remain alive, but only they know the password that allows passage through the gate. So, he's I talking... farewell. It has been a pleasure. May the good blood guide your way. Thank you, good sir. So, uh, he's talking about there's these crazy labyrinths under the city, and we're going to find some of them. The chalice dungeons are, uh, are these little things that you can, you can generate. We need to get a chalice first, which we will get pretty soon. But they're kind of like randomly generated dungeon things that you can complete that are pretty cool, and uh, I tried one out. They're, they're fun, and they have some good unique loot. That guy was waiting to ambush me, but I got him. There we go. Madman's knowledge, uh, we can use that to increase our insight. If we get up to 10, which should happen pretty soon if we encounter another boss here, we can buy some special things back in the Hunter's Dream. So here we go. We are uh, getting close here. I need to be careful, because I do not remember uh, what enemies lie ahead necessarily. There's a lot of notes here. Fire is effective. Fear giant beast. Ooh, yeah. Okay. I think we got something coming up. Let me grab my Molotov cocktails. Hello? Hello? Sometimes I like to jump in and jump back. You know, jump in, jump back from a door to lure whatever's in to, uh, yep, I hear something tra trampling around. Scampering. What's, what, what's scampering? Ah! Okay. Oh, it's a wolf beast. Hello. Can he get through that doorway? Maybe not. This is a good time to throw a Molotov cocktail at him and then jump in. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't get me. Okay. <laughs> I jumped in at the wrong moment there. I could just use another Molotov cocktail on him, but I don't want to waste him on this guy if he's uh, if he's going to just kind of give me an opportunity. This is a good time to, uh, to use my other trick form because then I can slice at him without getting too close. There we go. I don't use the other form of the sock cleaver too often, but it can be useful. This guy looks more, he's not as like frazzled as some of the other wolf beasts that we've encountered. He's a little bit more together for a lycanthrope. <laughs> he's, he's got his, his act together. Light waits ahead, all right. I don't think we have to deal with too much more before we get to Old Yarnum, but once we get there, we have a lot that we're gonna have to worry about because that is one of the creepiest places in terms of uh, enemies popping up out of uh, nowhere and there's something else that we have to deal with that is going to be scary as well but we'll see that very soon look how many echoes i got i got enough to level i think like three times so let's go those antidotes are going to be very useful because a lot of the enemies in this area are going to be able to poison you and poison is not good your health degenerates very quickly there let's light we got another lantern here and uh we're ready to head in anything hidden in one of these areas there's some uh some notes oh item i don't see the item is there something hidden in here it said oh item oh it's hidden under one of these things that's why rolling is good what did we get a pungent blood cocktail you can throw those and it's supposed to attract beasts but i haven't been able to make it work all right guys let's open this door and head into old yarnum next time actually i want to go level up so we're going to do that on the next episode Thank you guys for watching. Hello, fellow hunter. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this. We're going to head into another new area next time and battle a very tough boss that lies ahead in the hunt. I'll see you guys then for some more Bloodborne. Goodbye.